What's up, banjo players? Let's talk about finger picks because not everyone can grow their own natural nails. I used to exclusively use my natural nails or in a pinch, a glue on nail. And I stopped recently because even though my nails are pretty strong, like I have to use some force to actually, <laughs> to actually trim them and they grow back pretty fast. Uh, and not everyone can do that, which is another reason why you may want to use some finger picks. But even though mine were strong and fast growing, I still was running into the issue of, you know, constant maintenance and I couldn't use my hands for anything else in my life. And I got a lot of things, you know, that I want to do like um, with my hands, like, you know, uh, hold a baby that I have or, um, you know, do any kind of physical activity, <laughs> hold a lover. Just like having hands without fingernails is like better, ideally. So uh, I thought I could make a video on some options for how to play the banjo, specifically pitchfork style banjo, which requires some down and up picking with your index and middle fingers. So what nails work for this style of claw hammer? And I've been doing a lot of experimenting and I have some things to report back to you. So um, the first thing I tried were these um, uh, Fred Kelly Freedom Picks. Now, um, when I got them, I noticed that they were really short. Uh, and so th what I did is I glued some, uh, like Walgreens or like Rite Aid, uh, glue on nails on top of them to get them to the length that I wanted. Cause I really couldn't just get the like accuracy and pull under the strings that I wanted, uh, with them as they were. Um, although I think they sounded pretty nice and I think some people might prefer them that way. So anyway, I glued these nails on and, uh, I'll just give you a little demo right now. I still use my thumbnail. I haven't found uh, a replacement for that, but I don't think that's really important because most claw hammer players don't play with a thumbnail at all. I like it because I'm used to it, but it seems like no one else has a problem with having a short thumbnail. So um, uh, yeah, I haven't found a, a solution. I started playing claw hammer when I was playing a lot of like finger style guitar. Uh, and so I had a long, a big old gnarly thumbnail then. And so it's just what I'm used to but I haven't figured out a pick for that yet. Maybe that'll be a future video. So anyway, here is a, like I'll do a little bit of that Waynesboro um, at a nice slow tempo. I'm not, I'm not very good at these, but I think they sound decent. <laughs> used to them because I haven't been playing with these but I tried it out I think they work decently they have a pretty a pretty natural sound they feel they feel all right on the uh, up pick pretty gentle sounding um, the drawbacks they have like a kind of a weird pinch um, on the pad of the finger and uh, maybe if I wore them for a long time you would get it like a callus there but I don't know so I wasn't nuts about them, um, but they could be a good option. I think, you know, if uh, if you really like the sound of them, you could get used to them. Um, and specifically, if you wanted like short nails I th I th uh, to play with, that was just a little bit over the pad of your finger. Maybe that's how you're already used to playing. I think these could work pretty well. Um, yeah, and then you could, uh, you could glue on nails on top of that. Uh, the other thing I tried were... Um, Joel Hook's banjo thimbles. Uh, these were a close second place for me. Um, similarly, these aren't very long. Uh, they, they weren't as long as I like them to be. Um, but I thought the tone was pretty nice and loud. Um, and they work, they work pretty well going up and down. So I'll do a little bit of normal frailin for it. So those are a really close second. I think they sound really good. They feel more or less like a nail. They actually feel really comfortable on your finger. I think they're really handsome too. I think they look 
really good. Um, the only sort of drawback that I found with these is that um, the up the sound of the upstroke is like a little scrapey. Hear that? It's like rip, rip, rip. But it's just like a really nitpicky thing. Um, yeah, I think um, you could totally um, get used to playing pitchfork style banjo with these banjo uh, with these thimbles. I think Joel. Um, I think this is like an old way of playing. Like he likes to say, you know, the the original players. You know, they didn't. Uh, they didn't go to the nail salon. Um, you know, they would play with these thimbles. And, you know, those players would, you know, do all sorts of elaborate, you know, stroke style, like down and up picking and do some fancy stuff. So I think I think they sound really good. Um, I personally would like it if they were a little longer just for my tastes. And maybe if they were like beveled on the inside the same way that they are on the outside, maybe it would have a more even kind of sound because the downstroke sounds fantastic. Um, I'll play that for you here. It's like really bright and clear. So yeah, uh, but my, my all time favorite has definitely been the Sitar Mizrab. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, so th these are the finger picks that, um, sitar players use as in like the, um, you know, the classical Hindi instrument. Um, or if you, uh, are more familiar maybe with like the Beatles and they're kind of like psychedelic music, it's the thing that sounds like, you know, trippy music. Um, that's what they sort of appropriated it for. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, in the, I guess, sitar players, you know, they go up and down. I guess it's to the side because they hold their sitar like this, I think. Um, so it, it's actually, it works really well for playing down and up. Um, they look like this. They sort of hug on either side of your fingers. And, um, and then they form a triangle. Uh, the thing that I like about these is almost everything. Um, they sound great. <laughs> gentle than you would think they would be you know for like wire on on steel um i think they sound really good they actually sound really good with nylon strings too i've been using them on my other banjo it's like a big tack head banjo and they sound like they really make it make it sing um uh what else is good oh yeah i think it's even easier to play uh up picking um uh with these than uh with a nail um like it it feels easier to play it's a nice gentle sound it's like this the exact same up and down so it's just like really easy um you could probably play some like old time finger three finger playing if you know how to do that i don't really know how to do that but you probably could with these oops um i'm not going to edit that out uh and uh yeah i just think these are really special and they work really well um they're not as handsome as maybe like the thimbles uh but they kind of got a cool kind of look i don't know it's it's kind of weird so uh you can get these from rain city music um they have like an online store it's like a I think they're based in Seattle. Maybe I'm just assuming that because it's called Rain City. Um, but uh, they like have, um, uh, you know, classical uh, Indian and Hindi and other South Asian instruments and accessories there. Uh, you'll either see these um, M-I-Z-R-A-B or M-E-Z-R-A-B or maybe it's E-B. I think it's a transliteration, so there's no, like, correct way to spell it, I don't think. Uh, but just, you know, you could search around for those. Um, if you buy them, they're pretty cheap. Uh, these are probably the cheapest option out of all of these, and they're my favorite, so, you know, win-win. Um, they're pretty cheap, and I would just recommend buying a bunch of different sizes and kinds because they come, you know, wrapped in this, like, plastic, or sometimes they come and they're, like, double and they're more supported. Sometimes they're just wire or wire wound around 
the grip. Um, here is the here's the very important downside uh, that you should know before you get into these. And I do recommend these for their sound uh, and for the feel and the accuracy. Um, they are so so painful <laughs> when you start using them. Uh, you have to like really be willing to commit and you have to be careful because, um, you know, pain is like your body telling you that something's wrong, right? So like you don't want to get nerve damage uh, with these. And I, I'm sure this is a similar issue with like, um, you know, bluegrass picks as well. Like anytime you're like really depending on um, something that grabs onto your finger. Um, so if you'll, I've been playing with these for, I don't know, like a month and a half now. And you'll see, I got these big old calluses on either side now. And they, it really doesn't hurt anymore. And uh, I think I paced myself with it in such a way that I built up the calluses. Um, but um, I, I don't, I can still feel everything. I don't think there's any nerve damage, but you know, you have to be careful and you have to kind of commit to it. Um, uh, so that is, you know, <laughs> be heed, heed my warning. You don't want to hurt yourself, but if you can push on through and play a little bit every day and build up those calluses without hurting yourself, make sure to constantly adjust them. Um, and then I, I think it's really worth it, you know? Um, yeah, I think they feel really good once you have those big calluses for them to hold behind. Um, you have to have them pretty tight in order, uh, for you to be able to go up and down. The thing with like, you know, bluegrass picks, it, I'm assuming is like, you know, you only go one direction with each, uh, with each pick. So you don't have to have them super tight because, um, uh, you're not jostling it both ways, but with pitchfork style playing, you are jostling it both ways. So you have to have it like hug pretty tight, which is, I think that's what the sitar players, I think have to do as well. That's why they have this, this thing that like grabs on to your finger. Um, so at the end of the day, my personal preference is the sitar Mizrab. Uh, if you are careful, and you just slowly, over the course of a couple months, uh, build up these calluses. But uh, I don't think these calluses are going anywhere. Like, I still have this huge callus. Uh, you know, I'm like one of the slightly older... I'm sorry, I'm flipping you off right now. <laughs> this is, I'm one of the slightly older millennials. Um, and so I had to do a lot of handwritten homework um, and, like, writing a lot of papers and stuff. Like, probably one of the last kids that had to do that. So I still have my, like, writer's uh, big callus there. And um, I think eventually these other calluses will probably turn into something like that um, with like a little groove for the Miss Rob to fit in and just be totally comfortable and not hurt my body uh, or my nerves, my nerve endings at all. Um, that That is what I recommend. Uh, if you're not doing nails, um, then uh, I, I would try that out. But there are a lot of different options out there, and I think any of these methods could work really well. One more time, uh, the thimbles from Joel uh, Joel Hooks, um, the Fred Kelly Freedom Picks with the optional glued on uh, drugstore nails, and then the Sitar Ms. Rob. Make sure to get a bunch of different sizes. These they're cheap, you know, so it's you don't have to worry about like. A big investment or anything get a bunch of different sizes see what works and then just pace yourself and uh listen to your body but like allow it to build up those calluses um in response all right happy banjo playing and happy living your life without banjo nails maybe